Hello, it's Rachel Larson here again, uh, community liaison for the Drupal Association. I'm the next of our Drupal Association election 2020 candidate chats. And this time I'm with Pedro. Hello, Pedro, how are you doing? Hi, Rachel, I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right, how are That's you? good. Yeah, yeah, really good, really good. It's a nice day, uh, can't complain. It's a Friday, what can we complain Friday. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see whether they... <laughs> <laughs> this video probably won't get published till Monday though, so we'll see. <laughs> no, well, it's only that. three days from now. Just, just yeah, give me, chance to, <laughs> give me a chance to edit it, eh? <laughs> okay, right, well, I wanted to chat a little bit about your candidacy for 2020, mm -hmm. which is great. I'm really, really pleased to see some amazing candidates yourself included. We've, we've got 10 incredible candidates. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really pleased. Um, and the fact that we've got this uh, great community of people is mm -hmm. why we get good candidates. Um, and one of the things that we've been asking candidates is around community. What does that mean to you? What does building community mean to you? Um, I mean, I've been around Drupal for, yeah. A long know. while. <laughs> how many years? How many years? Probably 15 years or something. Um, and it doesn't, Drupal doesn't make sense to me without the community. It's like a, such a fundamental part. Like there are other um, technologies that um, are built. Like maybe you work, I don't want to drop names. But maybe you work with some technologies you're not part of any community and being part of an um, open source community where everything is shared, like you can even see like companies sharing strategies publicly or yeah. with each other in, through the, the Drupal community, which would probably, I mean, if you look at it like from an external perspective, it's like, what are you doing, right? It's, it's not a good thing to do. Or even like developers sharing, like they're all they do, like I used to, have a blog in the in the Spanish community was like very popular right, at the time, and I shared everything I did, and it was like uh, very reassuring. And I think uh, that's <laughs> part of the process of building everything, like this trust that is between all the parties on the on the on the community. Like I trust other companies to to actually help me. I trust other people to actually help me. I go to events, and then maybe I go to event in a country I've never been to, and I still build community there. And yeah, I've been in so many Drupal <clears throat> events that in, in so many countries, and you always find someone that, hey, I used to work on that, or, or this module I also, I also use, and or maybe, oh, I, you, did, you were the one that helped me that time, or you could do it go either way, either way. So that's a very, it's a very nice group to belong to. And even if there's like discrepancies and um, I'm like, sorry, that's my cat blocking the camera. Your sorry. new cat, yeah. <laughs> she's here and she's biting me. Don't bite me. <laughs> and um, yeah, <laughs> that was distracting. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the great thing. You can, even if there are discrepancies, there's always some common ground to, to come to. Most of the oh, that's probably. great! Yeah, yeah. I, it was really interesting when I was in uh, Lagos um, uh, at a conference, and there was a a guy, Stephen Stephen Wally, that was there on stage from Microsoft. You know, this amazing person from Microsoft. What was the example of good community he was talking about? Drupal. So that's yeah, good. we we yeah yeah, it was really good, and it, it was good for people outside of the community to hear that message. And I wonder how you see advocating for Drupal. What, what, what does that mean to you? You know, does, um, how do we go about advocating for Drupal as a project now and maybe in the future when you could possibly have a little more influence over that? I think there's so many layers to that. Like advocating for Drupal is like, what does that mean? Is this is this promoting Drupal? Is this, I don't know, defending Drupal? I was in an event in Barcelona many years ago 
there was this, they used to do this like Joomla versus Drupal or whatever. And the Joomla guy actually show up in a boxing outfit. And that yeah. was like, uh, <laughs> well, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I maybe then didn't like the kind of argumentation that he was doing, but it was a very good show off. It was like a very w good way to show compromise, right? Um, and uh, it is promoting Drupal, it is working with Drupal, it is like, um, there are many ways, like selling, like you get maybe an opportunity to sell a website and then you sell Drupal. And um, I've been, I don't know, I've been doing many, I've been wearing many, many different outfits of this advocating for Drupal thing. I was, uh, um, when I started doing um, uh, PHP in, in, in a company, we started with Drupal. And then months after I was like uh, organizing uh, Drupal and beers and many people came and it was like surprising. And then I got involved and then I started like speaking events, which is a very nice way to advocate for Drupal, um, helping organize in Drupal camps. Um, or user groups, that's, that's a fantastic way. Even though it's more difficult now, it still can be somehow done. And I think there are really good examples of uh, online Drupal camps. And I think BadCamp is going to go online. And of course, obviously DrupalCon is going to go online as well for, for the Drupal in Europe. And um, there are so many ways that you can advocate for Drupal, even if you're not like a hardcore, like, community person of a core developer or something, there's always opportunity to, to do so, right? There, um, I think there's some um, transformation in what Drupal is becoming um, as, um, and I think it's something that we need to manage as um, so many people of the community in, got into Drupal as a um, hobby, like they were hobbyists. I, myself, I built like a very small website for something I was doing in Drupal before working like uh, full time for, uh, I mean, in Drupal full time for just too long. Yeah. And, um, um, we are kind of losing the hobbyists. And I, I think this is something we probably as a community need to recognize and work with. Like it needs to be like this. Um, there was this funny like graph of the Drupal learning curve. Oh, I don't know if you yeah. remember that. Um, <laughs> and that was the cliff, and the cliff was in Drupal 7. I mean, <laughs> and we look back in Drupal 7, it was like, well, Drupal 7 was so much of a, like a smaller beast to like uh, tame, you know? But um, I think we're gaining, in the other side, we're gaining like other PHP communities to actually recognize us as a first-class citizen. So mm. that's, that's also good. But um, I think advocating is also um, caring about Drupal. Um, and yeah. care and care and take responsibility in whatever role you're taking. If you're helping the UCQs, maybe if you're just a user, that's okay. I think there was a, a time where being just a user and not contribute back, it was like a, kind of like frowned upon. And I think that we should lose that. I mean, people don't get engaged because they are obligated to. They get engaged because they care and they are they have it in them or they, they do have time because life changes and um, maybe a lot of people that we've grown all the way through Paul, and then a lot of people are having kids and having like other responsibilities, they can't contribute in the same way. Um, and uh, some people are taking it to the core and, and um, there's some burnout in the community and that's something that, that you need to, to recognize as a community member. You can get burned out and uh, we need to find mechanisms to, to bring that back and bring the spirit of contribution and and try to be kind to each other. And that's sometimes uh, all it takes, isn't it? Very much so, yeah. Bearing in mind that all of the things, especially at the moment, people have lots going on. And yeah. when we are working with each other, collaborating together, just being kind is, it's a very powerful thing, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, it, it's an incredible thing we can all do just to help each other just that tiny bit and yeah. make a difference yeah Definitely. so uh, moving on because uh, I'm trying to keep these not too long um, one of the things that I do remember from your past is actually you were a Drupal Association board member in its very early days 
So I think it was uh, second, second, uh, uh, the second elections. I think maybe. Yeah, the maybe so. Mm -hmm. Goodness me! Yeah, it could be. It was either the first, second, something like that. Yeah, and I was just wondering if you could tell us. So you've been Drupal Association board member once, so you will have got some experience from that mm -hmm. on boards and board experience. Have you managed to pick any similar experience up anywhere else in the meantime? Oh, um, it helped me. Um so much like understanding how boards mean because when i was an electing in 2012 i did not know um i did absolutely did not know how boards um, work and um donna and um steve parkis were elected before me and yeah. um donna has been such a great influence in the drupal community and she helped me a lot a lot through the board process and i remember also vesa helping me a lot in in that and it seems like it's been forever because it's been forever since that, right? <laughs> um, but I do have that experience and I've, I've translated that experience in my life. And um, I'm, um, I'm act as a, I act as a advisor to a small company in, in Spain, it's called Imbra. And we, we treat the board and my experience in the board for the Drupal Association has helped me to that as well. Mm. And it's also helped me to, um, since then I made a, kind of a transformation in my career on there was something I can't remember when on this says something in one of the keynotes probably saying doing well doing well something like that oh um, yeah I don't remember the exact phrase but since like my board experience I know the influence and I know um, that you can make a difference in other places and I've been ever since like transforming my career to work over. My clients now are more in the nonprofit slash institutions slash government uh, area more than um, I used to do a lot of e-commerce, you know, more than that. I still do that. I still do that. But m most of my clients are now uh, for institutions that do good for the community as a whole. Us, the, the that commons. must be a nice feeling, yeah. Yeah, it, it, and I don't, I don't see it doing, I don't see myself doing anything else right now at this point. I don't, I don't. Everyone can choose what they, what they do, obviously, but I, I do feel that you have one, you have skills, and you choose how to use them. And I chose this way, and I think it's, it's a good thing. And um, I hope, um, if I'm elected, I'm, I hope I can start not from zero but from some experience that i had in the board even though probably suddenly dries in the board since i was there i don't think anyone else wow all the seats, yeah all the things have been renovated which is a good thing the oh yeah absolutely yeah needs to hear uh different voices and that's why i didn't run on 2013 because i felt um that um the board needs to be renovated, but now I feel it's a, it's a good time for me to maybe come back because I do feel that I do have a very different voice now that I have. I'm much <laughs> less naive than I was in terms of. Oh, and that, that's, and, this is and, true. Yeah. yeah. And, it, it's, and it's, it, it applies to so much. Say so we you were talking about things like burnout before in the community when people sometimes take time out from our community that can actually be a good thing like taking it time is. out from the board mm -hmm. because you go away and you come back with so much more mm -hmm. um so that also applies to the board coming back you will be coming back with so much more experience I understanding so, yeah. yeah it would be really interesting um i don't know if we've had any returnees before i don't know mm -hmm. Well, Martin won the 2013 election, so he was twice elected. True, and, true. Uh, I don't know if that's a return, but I'm not sure if someone from the other, like the 13 elected seats have been, has been mm. uh, elected twice. Well, the, the, I know some... People get elected seats, twice, yeah. Yeah, some seats are continued, and that's the way it should be, because... Uh, one of the things that I proposed in my in my term that wasn't carried 
in my term, but wasn't carried, was carried over, was these two year stagger terms for board members. Mm. And um, um, I think that's, I haven't seen it, but one of the feelings I have is that um, having been, because Donna was selected as community seat, but then she was uh, ratified as from the board as a permanent, well, not a permanent, but one of the yeah. regulars. As a, as a different class, but, yeah. Yeah, having Donna been there for my term, it would have been like so much difficult. So I thought yeah. there should be someone that kind of onboards the board member because it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult experience. Well, yeah. I mean, whoever, whoever is elected this time will be very lucky because they will have uh, Leslie Glynn to help them in because she would have been mm-hmm. there a year by then. So it works out really well. It was a good proposal. I, I think it was absolutely the right thing to do. So I didn't I know that so. was you, actually. Um, well, I proposed it and I can't, it's, it was kind of like not consider or put in the back burner, but it was approved yeah. later on. Yeah. So I'm not sure who, I am not sure who pushed, but again, for it, I know I proposed it. I put it on the, on the table. But... Things can take a time. That, that is true. Yes, I, do, I am aware of that. <laughs> It okay. does. I remember. I remember <laughs> one of the proposals for for our term was to make the Drupal Association less dependent from DrupalCon, and I think we're still struggling with that. And I think mm-hmm. that's still a topic. And I think that's yeah. Still it's definitely thing. It's definitely something where doing more about say things like the Drupal Steward, which is kind of coming online now. Uh, we're starting to see clients on that. Uh, mm-hmm. That will help, etc. So diversifying our income streams is absolutely a, a yeah. big deal. Yeah. And the more we can do for that, the better. Um, yeah. So looking back at this long history that you, that you have, are there any particular favorite moments that stand out that make you think, yeah, this is special? I, I think, um, I mean, yeah, I think uh, one of my, I have a lot, but one of my top Definitely in top was the Drupal Con Barcelona in 2015. I actually have, actually have the sticker right here, my, my not. I have the sticker on my laptop, that same sticker. And I have actually, I have somewhere around here the vinyl with the logo of that. Um, uh, the company that designed the, the website uh, gave us, uh, Christina and I, and that's one of my, ah. like my favorite things I own, really. Uh, and it's it's there. I don't want to, <laughs> want to <laughs> but it's there. I want to like put it somewhere in the room. Um, uh, definitely, it was so it was great from the beginning. Um, the person that was um, managing DrupalCon events back then was Stephanie, mm. um, and I remember that she called me uh, to announce that the DrupalCon persona was. Uh, was thing that was like she called me and said do you want to be like the I wasn't even in Barcelona but back then <laughs> told me and told me well can you do like the the community the community part of DrupalCon and I say yeah but I will need I will need someone local for, for that as well so then Amanda took over and um, um, it was it was a great DrupalCon Amanda was such a good such a good person to we- work with it was great. Um, I loved every minute. Yeah, and um, the Drupal can turn out great, and and it was one of my definitely one of my favorite moments because I pushed for the Barcelona community so much. I lived there for ten years. I started doing Drupal there, and there was a Drupal con as I was beginning doing Drupal, but I want I didn't want to that one. I didn't go to that one. That's not a thing. Um, so it was an opportunity to actually have a Drupal con at my like kind of second home. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So I, I really should ask you if you've anything else that you want to bring up to support your candidate candidate. Well, ah, I can't say uh, the word. Candidacy. Can, yeah, there you can go. <laughs> candidacy. Okay. So yeah, there's there's a topic that's been is being around and I think I can't I can't ignore it because some of the um most of the candidates are great are great, as you said. Um um, but I wanted to move a little bit from the person, move away from the person in my candidacy and have something to talk about. And I think the, the issue that's happening with the voting rights, it's, um, it was important enough for me um, to move me to, to, to run for, for the board seat again. 
Yeah. And I think it's an important issue. Um, and I think that personally, I don't think it's right that the voting rights have been removed from the community at, at large. Um, even though, even though that the Drupal Association is doing doing work for someone like to request a membership and being able to vote, and um, just um, this morning I received an email saying, as you are a Drupal Care supporter, you can get free memberships for your company, and I did that right away. Like so, my I, I, I requested a membership for my business partner, and and someone which. Who is working with us because I think it's right. As many people has the right to vote as possible that they're engaged with the with the Drupal community. And I think engagement doesn't necessarily mean being a member of the Drupal Association because um, disagreement, there are some people that are not members because they disagree with some things, but they're still engaged with the Drupal community. And I think this should be this should be um, um, a way for them to actually engage if they want to have a voice they should be able to have a voice even if they don't agree with the current um, um, direction or whatever their reasons are not to be a member um, I think I want to in my candidacy I want to get as much information as possible out to the public um, on why this decision has been made exactly the data exactly what's the context what's everything happened and maybe maybe from my small little seat out of 15 trying to win some minds and, and, and souls and saying let's let's do something to fix it let's do something okay. to fix the relationship between all these people in the Drupal ecosystem that don't feel the feel that this is not right um, this doesn't sound right in the current climate uh, something to do so um, I think that's my whole thing for the candidacy, trying to bring some clarity on this issue and maybe more transparency because there's an issue there on whenever there's a relationship with, with, within two parties, if there's no total transparency, the other party tends to, it's just uh, natural, tends to fill the gaps. And they fill the gaps maybe, and I do it as well, with the things that I may think that has happened because I don't know exactly. So I fill the gaps. And that, need, that drives to, to maybe misunderstandings, that drives maybe suspicion, that drives to maybe lack of trust. So I think if we are transparent in, in, in all the decisions and things that happen, and people have all the facts and all the data, they don't need to fill these gaps. So I want to build a... Um, um, circle of circle is not the right, right word. Aura, what will it be like? Yeah, yeah. A layer of trust around the Drupal Association that can be Absolutely. can be shared with. It's impossible to share with everyone, but as mo most people as we can within the yeah. community. Well, I shall feed that back, um, and obviously everyone will be able to watch this video, so everyone will understand how you what you're saying there, with, and, and and so on. Um, and at this point, I wish you the best of luck with your election. Thank you. Uh, I know whoever wins will be fantastic. So Indeed. we shall see want, very soon, actually. So and I actually, I actually, I actually want people to vote. I'm actually not asking them to vote for me necessarily, but I want people to vote to show their, yes. their opinion. That is very important that people do vote. Regardless of who it's for, vote. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be turning up in their inboxes of their email soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.